Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Um, today it's going to be about EVs, um, but also about data, I suppose. Um, if you've watched my videos before, especially my solar videos, you'll know I'm a bit of a data geek. Yes, I do keep spreadsheets of solar data and also of EV charging data. And most of the time it's for my own benefit, but every now and then it comes in handy that you've actually saved some information, some data that you can verify what's been going on. And today's one of those days, so I thought I'd share some information with you in the form of what sort of size battery do I need? How many days have I been going out for trips in the Kona Electric where I've needed more than a certain amount of kilowatt hours in that journey? And I can tell that information, I can tell what's been going on with the information I've been saving in one of my spreadsheets. So there's the question, isn't there? You hear it from manufacturers that are trying to sell you small battery EVs, lower range EVs. You hear it from EV enthusiasts, probably the early adopters, the sort that have had Zoe 22s and Leaf 24 and Leaf 30s, etc. Those people are very keen to let you know that you don't really need a long range EV. Most of our journeys that we do are short journeys. Most of our average journeys that we do aren't very far at all. We don't really travel as far as we think we do. Now, whether that's true in all countries, I guess in the US, uh, there's a lot more longer distance journeys and Australia too. There must be a lot more longer distance journeys. Here in the UK and other countries like the UK, we're a little bit more compact and we don't travel as far all of the time. We don't commute as far for our work. Now, I don't work, I'm retired. So my trips are for social and pleasure and shopping, those sort of things. So yeah, most of my journeys are going to be small, but how many times a year do I do enough miles that would mean that I'd have to charge en route or charge on the way back or charge more than two times perhaps? How many times will I be inconvenienced by having a smaller range EV? Now, yes, I can think through and I can extrapolate my thoughts and thinking about how that might impact me. But of course, there's nothing better than to look at actual data to prove what have I done in an entire year? So that's what I want to do. Um, just over a year ago, I started recording information on the state of charge of my Kona Electric. So at the end of every day, I recorded what the state of charge was at the end of the day. So it's at the end of charging. So if I look at a spreadsheet that contains that information, and I'll post that to the side of the video now, then what we can see is on a daily basis how the state of charge changes. And that's what I was originally interested in. But if I add a column next to that and subtract the previous day from today, it shows me how many percentage points have changed, whether it's gone up or whether it's gone down. So if it's gone up, I can extrapolate that percentage using 64.2 as the kilowatt hour usable size of the Kona Electric's battery. So I can extrapolate out how many kilowatt hours I've added to the battery or how many I've taken out of the battery. So if I also add in the number of kilowatt hours that I've charged, because I keep that as well, then I'll have an absolute number for the end of the day, the impact I've had, how many kilowatt hours I've actually used in the car based on what it was yesterday, what I've charged today and what I must have driven today to have got to the state of charge that I've got now. So positive numbers in this list will be where I've just charged and haven't driven the car very much, so I've charged more than driving. Negative numbers will be where I've discharged the battery more than I've charged it. So let's have a look through and highlight which ones are more than 10 kilowatt hours and those that are more than, I don't know, more than 20 kilowatt hours, more than 28 kilowatt hours. Yeah, let, let's imagine that I was going to buy an Ionic, a Hyundai Ionic 28 kilowatt hour um, electric car. Then my range would be winter time 100 to 120 miles and in summer 140 to 150 miles of range. I'll choose the Ionic as an example because that's quite similar in efficiency to the Kona Electric. So these kilowatt hour numbers that I'm looking at here, my actual example of my Kona Electric that I had before I sold it, then they'll be quite valid. So here, let me take you through the spreadsheet and we'll see how many days I would have been inconvenienced and what that inconvenience would have actually been like. Do we really need a long range battery or are the enthusiasts and the car manufacturers trying to sell you small range EVs? Are they right? We don't really need a long range EV. 
Okay, so let's just scroll across to the part of the spreadsheet where we can see state of charge at the end of day. And there it is in about the middle of the screen now. And uh, I'll also show the charging from the zappy on the uh, column to the left as well. And what we're going to do is highlight anything uh, less than 10. So the minus 10, minus 11, minus 12, I'll highlight those in blue. And then anything that's above the 28 kilowatt hours, I'll highlight in a yellowy orange color. So what's quite obvious to start with is the number of rows that I'm not highlighting anything. So they're less than 10 kilowatt hours of energy used. So most of the time I'm not using very much energy in the Kona Electric at all. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven listed there on the screen that are above 10 kilowatt hours and three that are above the 28 kilowatt hours. So if we zoom in there and look at those three that have gone over 28 kilowatt hours, the first is 31 kilowatt hours, and it was a trip to Newmarket. We did about 140 miles. So yeah, in an Ionic, a 28 kilowatt hour, according to the kilowatt hours we used, then we would have had to have charged. Um, 140 miles? Yeah, it's not summer, so we might not have made that. And I think that sort of shows a typical example of where... We could have gone really slow, we might just have made it, maybe without the heaters on, all that sort of thing. Or we could have just found a charger on the way back and we'd have been fine. So we wouldn't have needed very much of a charge either. For 140 miles, we'd have only needed to charge for 10, 15 minutes maybe. Absolute most. The next one down there, yeah, huge number, 77 kilowatt hours. That was a long trip down to Cheltenham. So 213 miles down there, 213 miles back, and some driving around in between as well. But basically, we went to a hotel that had a charger. So the impact to us was only the 213 miles to get there. Plenty of charge um, to do everything we wanted while we were there. And then, of course, the 213 miles back. So yeah, would have needed a pretty much full charge of a 28 kilowatt hour for that trip. So a charge on the way down there and a charge on the way back. The last item there, 42 kilowatt hours, that was a trip to Peterborough. So for us, that's about 190 miles, a round trip, 85 to 95 there and 85 to 95 miles back, depending on the actual route we take. So in a 28 kilowatt hour, yeah. We wouldn't make it, would we? We'd have to charge. We'd have to charge not necessarily on the way there, but most certainly sometime on the way back or before we left. So we are visiting family on those trips. They could have been charged at their home while we were socialising, etc. Before we came back, or we could have popped to a rapid charger on the way home. So it wouldn't have been a big inconvenience. Those trips to Peterborough wouldn't be very difficult in a 28 kilowatt hour uh, Ionic or a 39 uh, kilowatt hour Kona Electric. So a smaller battery wouldn't have been a problem in that instance. So the two above, a little bit of an inconvenience. The Peterborough one, I don't think that would have been a big inconvenience to us at all. It's probably worth mentioning at this time that that trip to Peterborough was the trip that I was gauging what sized electric car I needed in the first place. I ideally wanted a car that could go there and back without having to charge. But since that time, which was two years ago, a lot more chargers have been installed, especially a um, Instavolt charger at Necton in Norfolk. And that really does bridge the gap between those two places, Norwich and Peterborough, and makes it very, very easy and very convenient for charging. So actually, things have changed from the point that I bought the Kona Electric and wanted to be able to go there and back without charging. Now, because I'm more confident, but also because of extra chargers being installed, I don't think I need that long-range Kona Electric any more to do that trip. I'd be happy with a smaller battery, I think. So if we scroll on just a little bit further until we get to the next highlighted in orange to see the next trip that would have been difficult for us in a smaller range DV, there we've got one, and it's rugby. So that trip was 145 miles there and 145 miles back back with an overnight stop in between in the Kona Electric that was very easy and just one rapid charge on the way home. In a smaller range EV, yeah, that would have been a bit tighter, so we'd have changed perhaps where we stayed and whether it had a charger or we'd have had a charge up on the way there or most certainly a larger charge up on the way back. So more charging involved, a little bit more inconvenience, but we could have changed our plans and stayed somewhere with a charger and made that a little bit easier for ourselves. We were very, very lucky on that trip. Actually, it was a free charge that we got on the way back, so those 50 kilowatt hours were all for free. 
Okay, if we continue scrolling through, we're um, going to approach lockdown period, so obviously I wouldn't be driving as much. Yep, and there we've got one more just before the lockdown period. That's another trip over to Peterborough, as we mentioned before. Very similar kilowatt hours used, this time 44 kilowatt hours instead of 42 kilowatt hours. So same sort of situation again. Definitely not enough um, energy in a 28 kilowatt hour Ionic to get there and back. In fact, 28 kilowatt hours, we wouldn't have much energy when we got there at all. So it really would be a case of trying to charge up at the destination, which was a, a family member's house, or rapid charging when we're there to have enough to get back back so one charge maybe even not even a paid for charge because it's at a family member's house and again think about this in the future everyone's going to have electric cars everyone's going to have a seven kilowatt charger so you're not going to have to take very long to charge the future looks really bright when all the homes that you're going to and all the family and friend members that you're going to are going to have chargers that you could potentially charge up at it as well so you're not going to need those public chargers as much so yes, this includes a lot of lockdown period, um, but my journeys would have been very similar. Maybe we would have had one more journey in it where we'd gone over the 28 kilowatt hours and was a, would have had to have charged en route or on the way back in a smaller range EV. But I think this goes to show that looking at a whole year's data for myself, I'm not using very much of that 64 kilowatt hours in the Kona Electric. So one of the reasons this sort of information is useful is quite simply because it saves you some money. So let's imagine you were looking at a Kona Electric or an E-Nero or something similar in an electric car where they can sell you a smaller battery. So yes, a Model 3 Tesla as well in the standard range rather than buying a long range. It saves you quite a lot of money by buying the lower sized battery. But what sort of impact would it have? You're buying a bigger battery which might have better residuals and might be more convenient for you, might help you out in these longer trips. But if we're not doing very many of them a year, what we're basically balancing is the convenience factor of having a bigger battery and a convenience factor of not having to charge the car as much versus the cost, the cost saving, which of a smaller battery EV might be Oh, let's have a think. It should be, I don't know, four, five, six thousand pounds for an example of, say, the e Nero or the Kona Electric. I'm buying the 39 kilowatt hour battery versus the 64 kilowatt hour battery. And the difference in range is about 180 to 190 miles on the 39 kilowatt hour to 280 to 320 miles on the 64 kilowatt hour. So just, just on that example alone, we're talking 100 miles difference for five or six thousand pounds. But if you don't use that extra 100 miles of range potential that you've got, was it worth buying in the first place? Did you need it? Should you buy it? So I hope my sharing, uh, my actual information on kilowatt hours used helps. Obviously, it's meaningless to you because your trips are very, very different. They're unique to you. But it should give you an idea of how it's impacted me and therefore think about how it might impact you. And I'm not necessarily encouraging you to go and buy small range EVs or long range EVs. It is whatever suits. But when I started this EV journey, I definitely thought a long range EV was what you wanted because you want the confidence. But actually now having had one for two years, I've got such confidence that I don't think it's necessary. I think you can adjust quite quickly. So maybe a long range EV is a great EV to start with to give you confidence with electric cars so you don't have any hassle. And then when you feel more of an expert with it, shall we say, or more confident and the extra charges have been installed on your routes because they are being installed all the time, then perhaps you'll consider a different range of cars because the battery size isn't necessarily the key factor anymore for you. So there you go. I thought I'd share it with you. Hope that was worthwhile sharing. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Give us a thumbs up, please. And if you haven't subscribed, your subscriptions are always welcome. It doesn't cost you anything at all and lets me know that you are interested in watching more videos. Thanks again and see you again soon. Bye for now.
And just for those of you that are still watching this blank screen, hoping for another piece of information as to which EV I'm going to be buying, or which I'm not, I think it's only fair to say that, yeah, I did sort of have you on in the last one, didn't I? It's not going to be a Polestar. The reason why I put that up is because I really was thinking of getting one, I was hoping for one, and things have changed. I'll explain that in another video, but no, not going to be a Polestar, not this time around.